Hi Year 10 students, this is Mr. Wong. This video is going to talk about wave effects and this includes reflection, refraction and diffraction that we have already demonstrated in the class with the ripple tank. So in this video we will further talk about how to draw the wave patterns and how the variables are affecting the effects. Before we talk about this, we really 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 need to think about why do we need to know about this? So other than you look so cool to know this, you also know how to apply this knowledge into certain scenario. Let's say people would know how the seabed distribution look like, or people can decide where to put the radio transmitter station, or whether the sound would travel in a louder volume or quieter volume here. Or you can also try to think about how do we apply the phenomenon to make the ultrasound scanner here. If you forget the wave patterns, how it looks like in the lesson, I recommend you to go and check the video below again to see uh, before you proceed to the next part. Okay, reflection. So uh, before that, of course, you need a wave. Uh, be careful that when you draw a wave, you need to draw it in a uniform way. By saying that, uh, well actually I should use a ruler. Other than that, when you try to draw the wave, the wavelength should be the same all the time, all right? And then you need a barrier. So let's draw a barrier here. All right, it doesn't matter how it tilt the angle. But for simplicity, we'll put it uh, so that the wave would totally reflected in 90 degrees so what I will be doing is I will try to continue the line that I know first alright this is the easiest part and you can see that if you compare these two waves you can see some length are missing here right some length are missing here so I need to uh, like the wave will not suddenly disappear so I need to add it back like this all right, same for the second one. All right, and the length that you should decide is actually easy because the the wave afterwards, the wave front should look the same regularly. So that's why the end should always the same should always be the same here. And since there are no more waves here, what will be happening is probably this is the the last wave and keep going forward all right and going up here in this case so right here it means that after the barrier here the wave was traveling from from the left to the right side this direction became became going up instead so you could also try to imagine uh, when a light or laser beam is uh, shoot it along the mirror here and then it, of course it will be reflected right so probably the reflected direction will be something like and you will learn about this in the next chapter and so that the angle here and the angle here will be the same all right it really doesn't matter how do you have the uh, the first beam going inside let's say if the beam is going in this way then of course the outcoming ray will be in a different way all right same as the water wave so this this is just an example simple example to show you how it is reflected uh, in a simple way only so it could be some other combination so for plane wave uh, the reflections look like that all right just like what I draw to you but for the circular wave uh, let's say you got a dropper here and then it produced the circular waves right so how do you draw this part then this is a bit more tricky here so um, you can try to imagine you got a source here and then um, you got the wow I try my best to draw here all right and then you got the circular wave and let's say you got similarly with a barrier here 
Alright, just like the image here. You've got a barrier here. And then what you need to do is you, you, you try to imagine this is a mirror. Alright, and by saying that, it means that if this is you, and this is a distance that uh, between the source and the barrier, like the wall here, then you also get the same distance. Alright, and then you can project the image of the source right here. Alright, just imagine this there is a source. And they're having the same situation, same wavelength producing the wave here. Alright, of course, right now I'm not drawing uh, uh, very best. So let's say the last one. Oops. Will look something like this. Alright, actually, these are redundant. Alright, these are not very important. What important is outside of the wall how it look like will be this one all right just like the 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 red dotted line here all right and as well as well as the next wave here okay so that is the way that we draw for the circular wave all right, like this. So actually what you need is just the lower part here. And lastly, don't forget to add to complete the uh, circular waves uh, with the yellow dotted line here with the black lines here. All right, of course you can use uh, whatever color you want, uh, but don't forget to connect it back. All right, so what happened is uh, the black one and the yellow one looks like a complete circle if you try to put the yellow dotted line back into the opposite side. Second one, refraction. So for refraction, I will try to draw the side view here. So let's say this is the normal water wave, all right? And when it try to enter the glass block here, what will happen is, um, let's try to draw it together. What will happen is the wavelength will be shorter and right after they leave the region they will go back to normal all right so that's how the reflection look like so this part is a more shallow shallower region and right now i want you to think about the uh, different physical quantities about the wave so it means that you can try to recall the formula here v equal f lambda and while v represent velocity F will be frequency and lambda will be wavelength. All right. Other than these three, you also got period and also amplitude here. All right, five of them. So let's think about. Um, well, let's say this is your observation. All right. So let's say for amplitude, it doesn't change here. It's the same amplitude here. Uh, for period. If you know and recall, period will be same as 1 over f, which means 1 over frequency here. And for frequency, since this is the same wave, right? This is the same wave produced by the same uh, vibrator. Let's say this is the, the motor okay, going up and down, right? So for frequency, it must be the same as well, all right? It doesn't, it doesn't change at all because uh, it won't suddenly change the frequency as long as it's traveling along to somewhere for a wave. So what happened here, it must be, you must say the wavelength become lower, of obviously become lower. And therefore, according to this equation, uh, maybe you can't really see for the velocity in the video, but in fact, it's traveling slower here. All right, so this is how generally for refraction, how it generally happen is just basically wavelength decrease and the velocity decrease that means it goes slower so finishing up the side view let's talk about the top view here for top view for all the blue lines here they are all the we call that wave fronts it means that for a side view of wave 
it will be the crest, the top, the peak, or we can say our right, crest is the fancy term of the wave itself. All right, and we put it represent to to be represented with the blue lines here. So if you can imagine the wave is like an army. So what happened is for let's say for the particles here they are moving happily with the original speed which is in deep water it should be fast a while later on they will move into the shallow water which will be slower here so the first soldier that it moves into the shallow region will be unhappy and it moves slowly all right so comparatively these are still happy and whilst this one will start to be unhappy and they slow down because of the shallow water is slow right so that's why the water wave seems like it bent uh, starting from this point and this point and, and so on and so forth all right and more and more soldiers are getting unhappy and moving slower here all right until for it for after this bot, all of them will be moving at the same speed. All right, by saying that, if all of them moving in the same speed, in a slow speed, they will not turn anymore. So the wave will keep going in in this direction, strictly, instead of uh, the transition period here in the middle. So basically, for this whole view here, we have uh, two things to think about and be careful. The first is about the direction itself. All right, I will not remember uh, which direction it will go. Always, I will try to think about the analogy here with all the soldiers, which side is slower, which side, which side is uh, faster, so you know which side they turn. In this case, in the, for this wave, basically it's like, more like if they turn into this direction, turn like uh, to, the right, uh, to the right side. And the second thing is, uh, if you recall the side view of refraction in the previous page, we talk about the wavelength, right? So the original wavelength and compare to the new wavelength should of course be different. If you can recall that, this one will be the new one, or right? in the shallow region will be uh, smaller than shorter, that means uh, than the first one. So that's the uh, second thing you need to pay attention to when you're trying to uh, draw the top view of the diffraction pattern. Okay, last one for diffraction. Diffraction, what you need is a slit. All right, basically this is called a slit. All right, or in the textbook it may say uh, a gap. Okay, and by saying that, uh, there will be a wave coming to the slit. And what will happen is, uh, of course, remember again, the wavelength should remain constant here. And what will happen is, it will spread out and became from a plane wave became into a circular wave here. All right. And of course, the effects of the diffraction will be different when this the width of the slit here are different all right if they are larger or they are smaller it will look differently so you may ask how do I know then I think the first thing you need to bear in mind is about uh, the ratio of the width uh, compared with the wavelength so let's say here the uh, the width of the slit and the wavelength are very similar so that gives you uh, quite good uh, effects of uh, diffraction. You can imagine that if you got a big slit here and when you get a wave like this, all right, what will happen is of course nothing, right? So of course there's no diffraction at all basically. So you can see that if the gap is really big then it doesn't do much good for you I mean do much uh, effects for diffraction for you and let's say if these two are the same kind of wave with the same wavelength but this time the wave obviously compared to this one is a bit wider so what will happen is the effect itself will be 
less compared to the previous one. So what it looks like will not be that circular. It, more, it is more like a straight line with a two bending lines here. All right, it's a, a little bit like um, spider web maybe. All right, so it's more like this. All right, if the gap is going to be a bit uh, larger here. So you may ask, other than changing the slit width, can I also change the wave as well? So if you try to recall the um, equation again, uh, of course you can't change V here, all right? Cause it's still the water medium, you can't change V. Unless you put some like, make, make it shallower or deeper, but that's not the pure diffraction already. For frequency, of course you can change it. And at the same time, you also change the wavelength. Let's say if you increase the motor speed. So what will happen is, uh, other than changing other than changing the gap itself if you try to make the frequency here lower so that you have wavelength larger here compared to to this let's say this is this is the normal one or this is a normal wavelength obviously this is a uh, larger wavelength here and the effect again would also be larger because if you try to think Oppositely, with the same uh, width of slit here. If you have the higher frequency one, that means with the shorter wavelength. What will happen is to the slit itself, it is too wide for one uh, wavelength here. So what will happen is again same as the previous one. The effect would not be that obvious in this case. So again, if you look at the quantities of the wave itself, let's say V equal F lambda, the um, quantities here does not change. So it, it will not change the speed, it will not have different frequency or it will not have different wavelength when it has passed through the gap here. All right, but it really depends on the ratio again I have to specify the ratio of the width and also the wavelength itself to see whether the effect is large or small that's it for all three phenomena and if you have understood all this uh, theory can you also try to think about the application that I showed you previously in the video and tell me the explanation during the class